Hey, what's going on? Jeff Lerner here. And in this video, we are talking about this book right here, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Is it all just a bunch of voodoo, hocus pocus, feel good kind of stuff? Or is it legit? Can it actually change your life? I'm going to give you my personal unbiased assessment. All right, so Think and Grow Rich, let's talk about it. Let's dig in, this is serious. I'm gonna take my seatbelt off, that's how serious this is. Let's talk about this book. Uh, first of all, it was written in the early 20th century by Napoleon Hill. If you're not familiar with the story of Napoleon Hill, he basically spent, I think it was about 20 years, he followed billionaires and magnates and tycoons and titans of industry around, talking about politicians, world leaders, you know, CEOs and founders of, of major companies that, that, you know, powered the industrial era in the United States. And he basically just documented their habits. He interviewed them and he tried to create, you know, sort of a, call it a, a meta study, you know, a study of the study of individuals, a comprehensive, you know, conclude set of conclusions about like, what does it really take to be extraordinarily successful in this world? Um, it's one of the most controversial books uh, probably in history, um, just by virtue of its popularity. And if you go read about it online, you have people that attack it and say that it's all just, you know, mindset and it's all just hypothetical and it's not tactical and it's not practical and it doesn't tell you what to actually do. Uh, but then you have obviously millions of people that swear by it and cite it as one of the most influential books in their life, you have people that say, well, look at Napoleon Hill, you know, he was a charlatan, he was a, people that'll attack his personal credentials, but then there's other people that say, look, the guy wrote one of the best-selling books of all time and ended up becoming very wealthy in his life, so he obviously did accomplish something, even if he wasn't, you know, as great maybe as the people that he was studying, that he wasn't trying to, to compete at their game, he was trying to create something different, and in that sense, he did you know as good as anyone in history has ever done. So you know, there's all you know, different people have different different perspectives, and I, I tend to say that you know whatever whatever you you're looking for, you're likely to find. Uh, people don't see the world so much as it is; they see the world as they are. Um, if you're looking for evidence to support that Napoleon Hill was you know some kind of a charlatan, you'll probably find it because you'll look at this book and say, well. It doesn't actually teach me the mechanics. It doesn't teach me how to build my sales funnel. It doesn't teach me how to convert leads. It doesn't teach me how to handle objections or close a sale. But on the flip side, uh, if you're looking for, you know, if you're if you're if you're already of a disposition to say, hey, I'm willing to do the hard work of learning the skills, learning the techniques, you know, learning the templates of how to mechanically set up a business. But I'm wondering. What is that X factor? What is that differentiator? Because look, I mean, just in the United States, there's over 30 million registered LLCs. Like starting a business is not the problem. There's millions of people that start businesses. Very few of them go on to be wildly, wildly successful. What's the X factor? What's the differentiator? Depending who you go to, depending where you look, depending who you ask, they'll say, oh, well, it's, it's circumstance. It's, it's, it's your station in life. It's the color of your skin. It's the, you know, whether or not English is your native language. It's how much money you're born with. It's who your parents were. It's who you know. It's where you're born. It's where you live. And then, you know, that, that creates one set of outcomes, one set of behaviors, which is sort of disempowered. Uh, well, gee, there's not much I can do. Nowhere to go with that. Oh, and then on the flip side, you have this book saying there actually are specific deliberate things that you can do up here starting up here that'll that you know they have to show up in your hands too but they start in your head they start in your mind and that you can do them and it'll change your your course of your life and i look at that and and you know i think in this world like maybe it's maybe it's like a postmodern point of view but you can rationalize just about anything into becoming your truth i mean look at our world like there's extreme liberals and extreme conservatives. And there's, you know, pacifists and there's, you know, highly militant, aggressive people. And there's nihilists and there's spiritualists and there's, I mean, vegans and there's 
whatever. Like it, you can rationalize anything into becoming the truth of your life. And you can find ample evidence to support it as your truth. You can find ample evidence to refute it as your truth. And at the end of the day, you have to say, and this is this is why I, I end up coming back to positive psychology so much, is like, what is gonna actually give me the best outcome for my life? And frankly, that's where I was at. This isn't so much me, you know, from from, you know, I I've had a lot of success in the last decade or so, and especially the last few years, things have gone really well. So this isn't me so much saying, you know, to this book, I give the credit, this book built it. No, I built it. I built what I have, but I will say there was a time in my life. This is, this is my actual review of this book. There was a time in my life, 2008, 2007, 2008 into a little bit of 2009, when I was at rock bottom as, as defeated in, you know, in every direction as I felt like I could possibly be without facing like a mortal illness. Um, you know, financially, personally, spiritually, I felt lost. Relationally, I, I was, you know, going through divorce. Like uh, I was in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Uh, professionally, I was at a crisis. I, I didn't want to be a musician anymore. I'd been a jazz musician. I, I bet my whole life on being this creative artist and I just, I wasn't happy. I was really disenfranchised and saw no future and just in every way I was really out of shape physically I, I wouldn't say that I had a, a serious illness but I did find out later that I was like bordering on on being you know pre-diabetic and developing a little bit of metabolic syndrome I was I was just really physically unhealthy so I was about as low as I could get and I I wouldn't say it was just this book because it was it was a group of people who really embodied and actually lived out the stuff that this book talks about. So it wasn't just like somebody said, here, read this book, Jeff, it'll change your life. It was like, I met a group of people. I met them on the internet. I found them on the internet and I ended up, you know, actually getting on a plane and meeting them in person and kind of befriending some of them and developing a work relationship with some of them and ended up growing into a real friendship with some of them. And I realized there is like an actual group of people out there that literally live this stuff. Like when you look through this table of contents and you go, okay, you know, step one, the first step to riches is, is desire. And Napoleon Hill goes on to, you know, describe it as a, a white, hot, burning desire. Like, yeah, everybody says they want to have different results in this life. People say they want to lose weight. People say they want to quit smoking. People say they want to reconnect with their kids or they want to patch things up with their parents or they want to move into a nicer house or they want to get a promotion at work or they want to this, they want to that. But there are some people who burn so hot with desire that it'll literally scorch anything else around them that isn't in the path of getting what it is that they're after. There's actually a group of people like that. They're the people that, you know, they, they succeed spectacularly and sometimes they fail silently. It's not only the successes. It, that's the, the, one of the biggest things I've learned about success and, and in meeting the people is that they were as intense when they were failing as they were when they were succeeding. It's not like once you get a taste of success, then you become intense, then you become fanatical, then you become white hot with desire. No, there was a time in, in every wildly successful person's life, uh, you know, discounting people where it's just pure luck, like a lottery winner or something. There was a time in their life when they were more confident, more driven, more sort of myopically focused on their goal than, they, than it really made sense for them to be based on the external result. There has to be a place there has to be a time in your life when your intensity outweighs your results because your intensity is what's going to blaze the trail. Your intensity is what's going to push, you know, push through the roadblocks and then the results are going to come. The results come later, right? Most people say, I, I need the results. I just need some traction. I need some, some evidence. I need some proof and then I can get on fire and they go their whole life or, or some meaningful chunk of their life and, and wait and, and time is... Time's not on your side in this world. Like we talk about the law of compound interest all the time, right? Einstein says the, the eighth wonder of the world, the, you know, compound interest is mankind's greatest invention. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't pay it, right? What is he really saying? That's, that sounds like kind of a throwaway quote. Those who don't understand it, pay it. How are you paying it? You're paying it in opportunity cost. It's not like somebody's necessarily deducting 5% a year from your bank account. But two things are happening. One, cost of living is going up. So the actual, the relative value of your money is going down, but also the opportunity for compounding is disappearing. It's passing away in the form of missed time. 
That's the opportunity cost. That's a form of paying compound interest. That's a negative return. And for most people who are waiting to say, if I can just get some results, if I can just get some proof, then I'd have the confidence, then I'd have the intensity, then I would stand up to the people around me that tell me I'm gonna fail, or I would stand up to my boss at work that says I'm not cut out, or I would stand up to my spouse, or I would stand up to my family who tells me that I should stay in my lane, or I should, I would, I would have the confidence to stand up and fight and declare what I want in this world, if I could just get some results, if I could just get some traction, something to show, something to wave in their face and say, see, you can't argue with this, so you can't argue with me. And time goes by and we wonder why we aren't becoming what we're capable of. You know, Jack Ma has a really, he's the, the creator of, of, founder of Alibaba, one of the biggest companies in China. And he has a really politically incorrect quote where he basically talks about poor people's lives are about waiting. They're waiting for something. Go watch Waiting for Godot. Like, like waiting is a depressing state because you have it right here. It's in, it's right here. It's in this book. It's in this table of contents. Burning desire, you don't need anything for that. Faith, you don't need anything for that. Auto suggestion, positive reinforcement, visualization, you don't need anything for that. Specialized knowledge in the world we live in, what's your excuse? It's called the University of YouTube. Want to know how to start a business? Join my program. I have a course that teaches you how to start digital businesses in this world. Like, I'm, that's not a pitch for my business, for my company. It's just, I just, I, there's no excuse for not having the specialized knowledge to move our life forward. Whatever job you do, you had to acquire specialized knowledge for. If you're a phlebotomist, if you're a dental assistant, if you're a dance instructor, if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, if you're a roofer, if you do HVAC, if you're an auto mechanic, tune tuning forks, whatever you do, you had to acquire specialized knowledge. So if you don't like the path that your life is on, acquire specialized knowledge in something else. You've already proven, even if your only specialized knowledge is that you memorize all the lyrics to rap God, you've proven that you have some skill. So apply it to a different trade, apply it down a different channel. Imagination, imagination. How many people get hung up there? How many people just can't see a different path for their life? Is that because we're fundamentally incapable of, of sight? but the mind doesn't have an eye? No, it's because we were all born with that. I'm pretty sure every kid imagines. The sad thing is most adults don't, but you know that skill's in there because you had it for a good chunk of your life. Access it, organize planning, decision, persistence, power of the mastermind. That's one that a lot of people I don't think fundamentally understand. The power of the mastermind. Why is it said that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with? Why is it said that there is power in assembling a group of like-minded people? Why is it said that if you wanna change your fortune, change your friends? Because energy is contagious. Mentality is contagious. Ambition is contagious. Get around different people. You don't, if you're watching a video on the internet right now of some guy in his car talking about Think and Grow Rich, I'm in my wife's car actually. But if you're that person, then you're probably looking for something out of this life. And I guarantee you that some element of that involves new relationships, new people. Become a part of a mastermind. Have you, have you ever been a part of a mastermind? I shudder to think at my life if I don't periodically assemble as part of this mastermind with peers, and mentors and people that are on the same path that I am trying to do similar things, which is not most people. That's one of the hardest things to understand about this world. We're terrified of failure, but we're also terrified of success because the number one driver of human personality is belonging. This is basic psychology. The number one driver of belonging. Look at whether it's you use like the you know, the Tony Robbins, Chloe Madonna's model, you have this tug between the need for certainty and the need for variety. If you go straight back to Adler uh, in the Viennese school, you have the need for belonging versus the need for uniqueness and individuality. Like it doesn't matter what model. If you, you know, go to Freud, go to Ellis, it's, they, they all reach the same conclusion. Go to, you know, Carl Jung. It's, it's always the same conclusion because it's the truth. We are torn between the need to feel like species likeness and the need to feel different and special and unique. And yet for most of us, there's sort of a cultural weight that shifts us towards the need to be more alike and to belong. And, and that the fear of not having that so often 
dominates the fear of not, not having that. Because at the same time, we recognize that it would be empirically terrible if everyone was the same. Hey, babe. Hi. I'm just going off in the car while I wait. With a fork holding your phone up? Yeah, I'm doing a review of Think and Grow Rich. I was just waiting for my wife. She was in an appointment. Say hi. Hi. This is real life, people. When you think and grow rich, you don't have to be at a job in the middle of the day and you get to go hang out while your wife's at an appointment and drive around all day. Anyways, listen guys, that's, that's my review. That's as authentic as I can get. Um, what else have we got in here? The brain, the sixth sense, the subconscious mind, how to outwit the six ghosts of fear. Here's the deal. If you go talk to your boss and say, well, this helped me get a promotion at work, they're probably gonna laugh at you because they work at the same place you do and they haven't gone the alternate path. They haven't taken the road less traveled. If you want a different life, you're gonna have to do different things. Find people who have the life that's more like the life that you want and get their advice. And I bet you, some of them will tell you same as me, that this book freaking rocks. All right, world, if you're into this kind of stuff, if you want more of my awesome life guidance, strategy, tools, tips, and tactics, subscribe to my channel. That's your next move. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified when I put out more videos. And I will catch you on the next one. Take care, team. Yeah.